Many Kenyan residents living near Lake Turkana have put, uh, protested against the construction of an hydroelectric power plant in neighboring Ethiopia. The Kenyans say the Gibe 3 dam project located along the Omo River will have a negative impact on their environment. In early 2010, Ethiopia celebrated as the country inaugurated the Gilgal Gibe 2 dam. Once the facility was completed, the country quickly embarked on the Gilgal 3 dam, the next phase of a series of hydroelectric projects that Prime Minister Melod Zanawi said will enable Ethiopia meet its energy needs and become Africa's only power exporter. The Gilgal Gibe 3 dam is a 243-meter-high roller compacted concrete dam with an associated hydroelectric power plant on the Omo River in Ethiopia. It will be part of the Gibe Cascade, a series of dams including the existing Gibe 1 dam, Gibe 2 power station, as well as the planned Gibe 4 and Gibe 5 dams. While the dams are a source of celebration in Ethiopia, they spell doom to the citizens of northwestern Kenya living along Lake Turkana. The Omo River is the main tributary and key source of water to the lake, which is the world's largest desert lake. Activists say the project will cause Lake Turkana to recede, inflict damage on the local economy, degrade biodiversity, and increase cross-border tensions between communities across the Kenya-Ethiopia border over pastures. Patrick Lissess laments the lack of consideration for the Kenyan residents. You don't think about the ecosystem which is in this lake or the habitats that are living around this lake. It seems you are trying to, you know, kill all these habitats that are living here. You know, you're destroying us. What is, what's happening? The government officials have also raised concern. Mark Ikale, councillor of Oloyangalani, explains what the lake means to his community. We totally depend on this lake. Through generation, our economic and social activities revolve around this lake. We are pleading with the government to stop its diversion. We don't even want to leave food. If this lake is diverted, then our way of life will completely be destroyed. It is estimated that after the completion of Gibe 3, it will take two years to fill its reservoir, causing Lake Trucana's water to recede. Joshua Angele is with Friends of Lake Trucana, a local environmental group. The people of this region demand a comprehensive environmental impact assessment to establish the impact that will arise with the damming of the river Omo and uh, consequently the, the, the stoppage of flow of 80% of the water into Lake Chicano. In June 2011, UNESCO's World Heritage Committee, in its 35th session held in Paris, called for the construction of the dam to be halted and requested that Ethiopia and Kenya invite a joint team from the World Heritage Center and the International Union for Conservation of Nations to review the dam's impact on Lake Trucana, a World Heritage Site. Well, joining us in the studio now to talk about the controversial Gibe 3 dam project is Ikal Angele, founder of Friends of Lake Turkana, Kenya, a community organization that is working to stop plans to build the dam. She is also a 2012 Goldman Environmental Prize winner. Ikal Angele, welcome to In Focus. And I have to congratulate you for winning that prize, a very prestigious prize. Thank you very much. Very proud of you. Thank you. Now tell me, what does that prize, that award mean to you and your community? Well, it's a sense of recognition of our struggle. Um, it's been a long struggle and for us, this just takes it to the next level so mm. that we recognize that our struggles within have been recognized you know, beyond the borders. Yes, so now we have to realize that actually you, when you formed the organization, you were taking on the government of Ethiopia, uh, which was undertaking a project that has a sense of national pride and real value to uh, the people of Ethiopia. What made you think uh, that you can actually succeed in your efforts? Not fighting was not an option for us, and so it wasn't, it wasn't the thought of whether we're succeeding or not, it was we just had to do it. Um, step by step, just realizing one victory after another made us realize that we actually will succeed. 
in stopping the project. That was the only option? Yes, because that was the only option. <laughs> now, of course, there's a government in Nairobi. And when uh, this project was being started in Ethiopia, you would have expected the government to be concerned about anything that may impact on its, its, its citizens. Did you ever hear the government of Niro in Nairobi, the officials in Nairobi, engage the government of Ethiopia uh, regarding this project? The fact that they didn't inform us as a community and our members of parliament before the project began made us realize that there was something wrong with, with the whole issue and the government's participation. Um, it took after we raised the concerns that the government of Kenya actually spoke about it. And their speaking about it has always been not very not taking into, into um, consideration the concerns of the community. In fact, Turukana is a very dry area, prone to droughts and famine, and uh, the only source of livelihood is the lake. And nobody was talking about it in Nairobi. Nobody was talking about it. The concern was electricity. <laughs> now tell me, what does it mean to the people of Turukana if this water was to be stopped from flowing fully into the lake from Lake uh, River Omo? One because the flow of the river into the lake will reduce, that means the lake yeah. salinity levels will increase. That means while the water is brackish and we find it very so, quite salty, we're able to consume it. If the water is, stop, is reduced or stopped in any way, it becomes very acidic. So we will not consume it, both for human and animal consumption. Mm -hmm. The water table of the lake determines the water table of the region. So with the lake dropping its, its water table, it means that the boreholes, the shallow ponds, all these other uh, access to water is, is stopped, the identity of the Turkana and the Turkana communities is the lake. And you, you, you finish the lake, you totally wipe out the identity. Wipe out the people. In fact, some, some, sometimes when I talk to people from Turkana, they say they feel like the government of Kenya sometimes forgets about them. Do, do you get that feeling sometimes? We have been, we, more and more development is, is we are like collateral damage. And it has been that way since post-independence. We thought it would change with the various governments. We keep seeing more and more governments saying, we need to develop, but we ask, who, who is we? Mm -hmm. Are we really part of the, of the Kenyan government? Now, we've been seeing uh, famine relief being taken to Turukana, especially since last year. But what is being done on the ground to show that the government is even interested in helping the people to help themselves mitigate the conditions that are the reality of their lives? Until the actual problem, the reason why food relief is needed in Turkana is actually discussed, we will never really get a solution on the ground. Every time it's seen as a reactive solution, mm. but no one wants to discuss the problem that causes the food relief. Mm. Right now there's an interest. We've just gotten oil, yeah. and now uh, Southern Sudan wants to pass a pipeline through Turkana. So we are now seemingly part of the discussion. <laughs> Well, let's hope this discussion is going to take uh, on a more positive angle this time around. You know, thank you very much, uh, Angele, for joining us today. Uh, Miss uh, Angele, we appreciate uh, very much your sharing uh, your views with us. In Ikal Angele, founder of Friends of uh, Lake Turkana, Kenya, and a 2012 Goldman Environmental Prize winner. Thanks very much for joining us here on In Focus.